In this Algebra 1 video, we're in Chapter 6, Lesson 1, Graphing Systems of Equations. Our objective is, as the student, I can determine the number of solutions a system of linear equations has, and I can solve for them because I will look to see if and where they cross and interpret that location. Now, I'm already going to make a promise to you now. I'm going to introduce some slightly new vocabulary, not a lot, but I'm, I guarantee you this. The foundation of everything we're about to be doing is what you already know how to graph linear equations, especially, and we're going to focus on, when they're in slope-intercept form. So this is at the foundation of everything we're doing. But in this case, we're just doing two at, two at a time for each question. We're graphing them both at the same time. All right, let's jump in there. Some slightly new vocabulary. Let's make sure we're clear what a system of equations is. It's two or more linear equations about the same stuff. That's my fancy way of saying, aka the variables, meaning I'm just making these up at the very bottom. y equals 2x plus 5, y equals negative 3x minus 4. Now I just made this up off the top of my head, but these two equations, they're using the same stuff, the same variables. So you can graph them on the same graph, and these graphs will cross. Where they cross brings me to my next point. Where they cross, that's the solution. Meaning, we're going to take these two lines, we're going to graph them on the same graph. So one looks like that, one looks like that, and where they cross them over here. That's just a quick, ugly sketch, but it's all about where they cross. In other words, where or when are they equal? Most of the time, we'll say that we'll, most of the time we will phrase our answer as an ordered pair. Remember, ordered pairs are x, comma, y. So 2, comma, 3 is an example. But when we're talking word problems, we're talking context situations, We'll actually say those answers in context what they represent. Like maybe x stood for hours, maybe y stood for dollars. So you can say in that two comma three answer, you would say in two hours there were three dollars. You would actually put it in the words. That was just a lame example I made up off the top of my head. Some of you might be thinking, wait, what do I do again? How do I graph? That means it's time for a graphing crash course. Now, you don't have to write this down if you already remember all this. I'm pasting this straight from some notes you've had in the past. So this was the, the, from the slide that we learned about how to graph slope-intercept form. So let's take a look at this one. All right, so basically when you do this, you look at who is the slope, who is the y-intercept, okay? Those are the two pieces of information you need. And those steps we did are at the bottom. You graph the y-intercept. In this case, the y-intercept was 1, so you go up 1, you put a dot. Then you had to graph the slope from the y-intercept. The slope was 2 over 3, so that means up 2 over 3, so up 1 over up 2, then over 1, 2, 3, and that's where that dot came from. And if you want, do it again. Go up 2 over 3 again. But basically, that's how you graph lines. Graph the y-intercept. Graph the slope from the y-intercept. Draw your line. That's your crash course on how to graph. What we're going to do now is we're going to do that two times for each question because we're going to look to see where do they cross. Before we start doing examples, I want you to take comfort in knowing lifeguard perspective. There's only three possibilities. That is not how you spell possibilities. I'll fix it in a minute. Okay, so take comfort. There are only three possibilities. If you've got two lines, there are only three things that can possibly happen. Now, this table is straight from your handout. So if you have your handout, you don't necessarily need to copy most of the table. Just, just sketch it and write the bare information. But at least write the things I know I wrote at the bottom and, and do a sketch of what you see here and how many solutions. The terminology, though, is not that big of a deal. All right, anyways, the first possibility is your lines cross, okay? They can only cross one time. Or if your lines are laying on top of each other like that, then they cross everywhere. So that means they have infinite solutions. They're on top of each other. Or let's say your lines are parallel. Your lines never cross. Well, if they never cross, they have no solutions. Okay, let's bring it down to my, the third line, the third row, terminology. Now, the terminology isn't super exciting, but it is something I need you to recognize. So you basically need to know, if they cross, whether it be one time or a bajillion times, so if they cross one time or an infinite amount of times, regardless, if they cross, it's considered consistent, meaning it has a solution. If they only cross once, it's independent, meaning they don't normally affect each other, they just they cross only one location. Or if they cross everywhere, they're dependent, meaning they affect each other at all times, they're lying on top of each other, they're the same thing. So you need to know those words, consistent or independent or dependent. Well, if they never cross, then it's inconsistent. You'll have no answer, no solution. That happens on me with parallel lines. I had to at least mention the terminology. It wasn't, it wasn't super exciting, but it was, it was necessary. 
All right, now, this is, what, this is what I really want you to pay attention to. How do I know? How do you know these are the situations? Other than looking at the graph. Let's say you're trying to figure it out as soon as possible. Use, your, use what you know. If they cross, that means they have, if they cross only once, that means they have different slopes. Okay, so one will be positive, one will be negative. Or technically, one can be kind of flat, one can be kind of steep. So those both would have a positive slope, but they still cross. But the slope is still different. Or they could have the same slope and the same y-intercept. They could have the same slope or the same y-intercept. And if they have the same, same y-intercept, they cross the same location. If they have the same slope, they have the same steepness. So that means it's the same line on top of itself. Or if they're parallel, they'll have the same slope, but they'll have different y-intercepts. Because where they cross the y-axis will be different, but they'll have the same steepness, so they'll never cross. So that's a way to know you have no solution. So if you're ever solving, if you're ever doing it, and you see you have two lines that have the same slope. So I'm just going to make up this example. y equals 3x plus 5. y equals 3x, I don't know, minus 4. You'll notice both these have the same slope. So because of this, you'll say parallel, no solution. You don't actually have to do any work. You can stop there. Okay, so we're now going to jump in there and do some examples. At this point, you know what you need to know. Now it's just time to graph, look to see where they cross, and then confirm that that's where they cross. Okay, so take a look at these two examples. I basically want you to do the same thing for both. I want you to determine, does it have a solution? And if so, what is it? Is it infinite solutions? Is it no solution? Is it one solution? And for the sake of argument, just to make sure we're recognizing it, we'll go ahead and throw out and name some of those terminology. We're going to say consistent, inconsistent, dependent, independent, that type of stuff. All right, so at first glance, you don't even actually, you can get away with this first one. You don't even have to graph. When you look at the slope of example A, you'll notice they have the same slope. They both have the same slope. It's negative 2 over 1, which means it's something like that. But look, they have different y-intercepts. That means one is there, one is there. So those lines are never going to cross. In fact, they're parallel. And if they're parallel, that means there's no solution. So the answer to A is parallel, no solution. But for the sake of throwing out the fancy terminology, we're going to say it's inconsistent. But basically, I want you to say parallel, no solutions. But just know, the word inconsistent is basically saying the same thing. So I'm going to be honest, I'm not even going to legitimately graph example A because you can stop there. You, that's enough information. That's perfectly fine. But for the sake of proving it, if you want to see it visually, yeah, go ahead and graph those. Okay, so let's move on to example B. Now, for example B, we're going to legitimately graph both of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them to a second page, and you might want to switch to graph paper at this point so we can graph them. But honestly, uh, because when you quick sketch these, sometimes you're off a little too much to where your solution won't be very clear. So I recommend you use graph paper and a ruler for graphing these. All right, so let's go ahead and start by identifying our slope. The slope of the first one is 2. And in fact, it's 2 over 1, which means up 2 over 1. Remember, it's always over to the right. Okay, so for the second one, our slope is negative 2. So negative 2 over 1. That means down 2 over 1. Now, our y-intercept is the number that's over by itself. The y-intercept of that first one is negative 3. The y-intercept of the second one is positive 1. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and throw down an x and y axis. We can get these graphed. All right, so stick these down. And again, use a ruler when you're graphing the lines so that you can be very precise in where they cross because you don't want to be off where they cross and be guessing and checking and guessing and checking this whole time until you know you're right or not. All right, so let's go ahead and graph both these. Remember, graph the y-intercepts first. The first one has a y-intercept of negative 3, so that's down here. The second one has a y-intercept of 1. Notice I'm kind of graphing them both simultaneously. Now, graph the slope from the y-intercept. The slope of the first one was up 2 over 1, so from here we go up 1, up 2, over 1, so right here. Now, and if you want, feel free to do it again, and you'll end up here. Oop, I didn't draw it. There we go. All right. Now, with the other one, it, the one with the y-intercept of 1, it has a slope of negative 2 over 1, so down 2 over 1, so down 1, 2, or 1, so put a, put a dot. Feel free to do it again. Oh, you may have noticed, they crossed right here. They both happen to share the same dot. That makes it extra easy and clear to tell what that point is. But even if you weren't sure what that point was, you could, you could estimate where they cross. That really looks like one common negative one. And then you can plug it in and check, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Anyways, once you grab both these lines, go ahead and um, draw your line through both of them, because you're going to visually check to see where do they cross. That's the goal of this. All right, so I got my line, and it looks like where they cross is right there. 
and that location is, because you actually want to identify that location. So anyways, you graphed, now it's time to find your solution. Well, your solution is where they cross, and that's one common negative one. In this case, we, we already kind of know that's the answer, but I want to show you how to check and make sure, how to confirm you have the correct answer. Because what if you graphed it wrong, or what if you estimated where they cross, you weren't quite sure, because technically it can be a decimal, but I'll be honest with you, for these graphing questions, you're not going to have any decimal answers, any scary answers, because there's three ways to solve systems of equations. I probably should mention that in the beginning. This is the least accurate way, but it's the most convenient fast. It's the most convenient way, but it's not one of the ways that always works. We'll pursue those ways in the next week or so. Anyways, let's check this ordered pair and make sure it's our solution. So that's your final step. Confirm it's your solution. I'm going to do that on the next page. Okay, so we think the solution is 1 comma negative 1. Let's plug it in to check. You take both of these equations, you plug this in, and make sure it's true for both of them. So notice, I wrote the shell down to where I left y and x a blank, and we're going to plug in for those. So I wrote the shell for both of them, so I'll go ahead and plug in the 1 comma negative 1. The 1 is the x, and so that's going to go right here. The y is the negative 1, so it's going to go right here. Okay, now check to see what both these equals and see if there's a true statement. The left one is a true statement. We're left with negative 1 equals negative 1. That's true. Now let's check the right one. The right one is also a true statement. So, it's a, so this ordered pair is a true statement to both of them. So because it was a true statement for both of them, it most definitely is your answer. And technically, yes, you can guess and check this way too. You think you know the ordered pair, plug it in and make sure it's true for both. So yes, you found your solution most definitely. It's 1 comma negative 1. Oh yeah, and don't forget, we're supposed to call this consistent and independent. Alright, I'm going to have you do two more examples. Remember, if y is not already by itself, get y by itself. So you're going to do two more examples, check yourself, and we're going to be all done. We'll do more word problems in class and take it to the next level. For now, we're just focused on the arithmetic of the graphing method. Also, we'll pursue more we will pursue more word problems and applied questions when we learn more of the techniques, more of the methods. Remember I told you there's three methods. I mentioned it. Should have said in the beginning. There's three ways to solve systems of equations. We're not only learning one of them. When we start learning more three of all three of them, I'm going to let you kind of pick your favorites because two of them always work. And so when we start picking our favorites and start getting more uh, fluent with what we're doing, then we, um, more fluent, then we will work in more applied questions. All right, you've got a question. I want you to hit pause and give this one a shot. I already gave you a hint. Get Y by itself first for both of these. You give it a shot. I'm in the process of getting Y by itself for the second equation. I just want to remind you, when you move X to the other side, it needs to be listed first. Because it said minus 3X, it makes it negative 3X right here. Finish by dividing both sides by 3, and you're done with getting y by itself. You end up with y equals negative x plus 4. Oh, hey, that should look familiar. These two equations, they look kind of familiar. Oh, that's because they're exactly the same. For starters, they both have a slope of negative 1, and they both have a slope of 4. That means they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. And if you remember from this page over here, if they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, they're going to be the exact same line. They're going to be sitting on top of each other, which means whether you graph this one or not, you're going to have infinite solutions. So actually, for the sake of time, I think may only, I may only draw a janky quick sketch graph. I'm not actually going to graph this one precisely because they're going to be lying on top of each other. It's the exact same line. So what that means is you'll say um, infinite solutions, it's the same line, and to use the fancy terminology, it's consistent and dependent. And here's my quick sketch, like that. They'll be lying on top of each other, except mine's really ugly. All right, here's your final example. Remember to get y by itself. Oh, and hint, hint, you might notice the second equation, there is no y. So that's going to be one of those special formats of equations. It'll help if you remember the mnemonic device. Hoi vux. That means horizontal lines have a slope of zero and they have the format of y equals a number. Vertical lines have a slope that is undefined and have an equation of x equals a number. So that's what we have here. We have x equals a number. That means we're going to have a vertical line. That mnemonic device, hoi vux, will help you remember that. Get y by itself. Oh no, this is an example with fractions. Your slope is technically the negative 1 in front of here over 2. So the slope is negative 1 over 2. So your slope is down 1 over 2. 
your y-intercept is 3 over 2, that's an improper fraction that turns into 1 and a half. So you got to keep track of your fraction skills, but whatever. This is basically how this graph looks. So go ahead and um, start sketching each of these graphs. Actually, do not sketch. Graph these precisely and exactly. So we're going to take this important information over here. We're going to go graph it. I'm going to do it on the next page. Okay, so remember we're using a ruler to do these precisely, especially when you've got to deal with fractions in here. You want to make sure you graph this very precisely so you take your time and you don't make any mistakes. Let's talk strategy for a minute. When you go to graph this, if you want to make it extra precise, notice your y-intercept has a fraction in it. So here's what you could do. You could strategically say, this is half, this is one, this is one and a half, and this is two. You could strategically do it that way. That way your y-intercept goes here. You can go by halves on the vertical, then go by, still go by ones on the horizontal. You could still do that, and so... It, but that's something you can do strategically, or you can just put half as right in the middle. But then you'll have, then you'll feel like you might be estimating for your answers. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this without going by halves. But once you know strategically, you can. I might not have room to do it. But so I'm gonna go ahead and graph it as is. All right, so let's go put down that y-intercept. So again, I'm going by ones in every direction just to keep it simple. Okay, so one and half is right there. My slope is down one over two. Well, down one isn't here. It's, it's not to the origin, and it's not here. It's actually right in between. If you're at one and a half and you go down one, you're actually at half. So it's there. And then over two. One, two. So right here. That dot goes here. So if I go down one over two again, down one is here, over two, I'm here. So I think you're starting to get the idea of what I mean. I'll go ahead and do it one more time just for the sake of making it clear. So... So that's me graphing the slope of that first line. Take your ruler, make sure you graph that very precisely. That is very important. Okay, so our other equation is x equals 5. Well, that one's easy. That's just a vertical line at x equals 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's right here. So in fact, it's just a vertical line. So go ahead and draw a vertical line that goes through that location. So in, in this case, it's going to be straight down like that. It's almost going to look like an axis, but I'm going to go ahead and put red arrows on it so you know it's my graph. Anyways, where they cross, that's right here. Well, that point looks like 5 comma negative 1. But remember, you technically maybe were a little unsure because you're using fractions. That location looks like 5 comma negative 1. So now I'll just finish up by confirming that's your answer by doing what we did here and plugging it in and confirming. And if that's your answer, you're all done. If it's not, keep looking. And I'll give you a hint, you don't have to plug into your second equation, because your second equation, there is no plugging in, there is no choice, it's always x equals 5, there is no input-output situation, but there is for the first one. So plug in a 5, plug in a negative 1, and you gotta, and you got to see if this is a true statement. Anyways, um, half times 5 is 2.5, a, a negative times a positive is a negative, so that's negative 2.5, so we're left with negative 2.5 plus 1.5. Well, that means you're coming back towards zero, so you're going to end up at negative one. So you'll have negative one equals negative one. And if you don't believe me, take your time, check out the calculator, do common denominators, whatever you want to do. But you end up with the true statement. So that means it is a solution to the first equation, and we can very clearly see it's a solution to the second equation. And so we are good to go. This solution is the solution to this question. The answer to our question is five comma negative one. That is the solution to this linear system. All right, so we didn't do a ton of examples, but I felt like we really explained them. So in general, I'm going to say it one final time. There are three ways to solve systems of equations. This is just the first way. This is not the way that always works, meaning it doesn't work for decimals. It doesn't work for hard answers, but it's the way it's very visual, and it's very hands-on. It helps you use the skills we've already learned with graphing. Now, we're going to learn two more ways after our midterm. We're going to talk about the substitution method, the elimination method. Those two methods always work. So for those, I don't even care which one you like the best. You choose and choose, go with the one you like, and it always works. Personally, I like using both, but we'll talk strategy later on. So check, make sure you have your notes, and we'll come to class, and we'll go to the next level. Take care.